Praise the Lord. Amen. What I talk about tonight is how to handle people's problems. That in your whole lifetime, you come across people who make you feel unhappy. That they might say things that make you feel unhappy. They might do things that make you unhappy. And then it can affect our spiritual life. And make us unhappy. Are there people around you that say, negative things to you? Je, kuna watu karibu na wewe ambao wanaongea mambo mabaya kuhusu? Are there? Wako. So, when people are affected by other people, then they can become unhappy. Wakati mtu anapochokozwa na mwingine, huyo mtu hakuwa na furaha. And will not be able to enjoy life. Na hauwezi ukasherekea maisha. Let me uh, share with you what happened. Uh, in 1998, after I experienced the Holy Spirit. I was evangelist When the evangelist laid hand on me, and experienced power and love flowing to me. Wakati mwingilisti alipo niwekea mikono ni kanza kuhisi upendo na ile amani ya mungu ikaingia na ni mwangu. I was very thankful to God. Nili msukuru sana mungu. And I, every day I kept praising God. And I found that every time I cry out to God, I can feel power go through me. And one day in a meeting, I started to experience the joy of the Lord. And I was filled with the joy of the Lord any time I pray. So, at that, you know, I spent a lot of time praying every day. On, on the day when I experienced the joy of the Lord, when I went home, now, I want to keep the joy, and I, uh, you know, in the whole meeting, I kept staying Loving God and let the joy stay in me. So every time I think of Jesus, the joy will come, keep coming. Hallelujah. And then on the bus, in the public transportation, I want to keep that joy too. Because I know many people experience the joy of the Lord and then they lose it. But I cannot laugh out loudly in the bus. So this is what I did in the bus. I kept thinking about Jesus and let the joy come in. But no sound. Because there were people there in the bus. I kept the joy of the Lord. And the next morning when I woke up, I started thinking about Jesus and the joy keep coming back. And every day after that, I was like, Kila siku nilikuwa ninafikiria hivyo na furaha nikiendelea kujazwa na furaha. Up to today, mpaka wa leo. Every time even in the middle of the night when I woke up, na kila siku hata katikati ya usiku ninapoamka, when I think of the love of God, immediately I have the joy of the Lord. Nikifikiria kuhusu furaha ya Bwana, ninaona nguvu za Mungu nikijaza. But people around me may not hear. Watu ambao karibu na mimi hawawezi wakasikia. But I, because I might be just experience the joy flowing through me. You might not see me laughing. Come again. You might not see me laughing. Laughing. How is it the love that you and I need But inside me, I felt the joy flowing through me. Lakini ndani mwangu ninaona furaha ya Bwana ikibubujika. Now with this joy flowing me all the time. Now he furaha kubujika ndani mwangu kila dakika. What happened is, I, you know, any time I have any problem, immediately I 
you know, I pray and then I have joy it will take away the problem. Kila wakati ambapo niko na matatizo huwa naanza kutafakari kuhusu pendo la Mungu na hilo pendo la Mungu linakuja linaniondolea matatizo. And then when I pray for people many people experience the joy of the Lord. Na wakati ninapoombea watu watu wanaanza kuhisi furaha ya Bwana. When they are open to God. Kama wamejifungua kwa Bwana. It's not easy to experience the joy of the Lord. Sio rahisi kuhisi ile furaha ya Bwana. You have to really hunger for God. Ni lazima uwe na njaa kwa Mungu and put down your burdens. Na sasa uweke chini mizigo zote. But what one day I call up someone to tell her about my experience. Siku ingine nikapigia mtu simu nikamwambia kuhusu jinsi nilivyokuwa nimehisi. But she was not open to the work of the Holy Spirit. Lakini yeye hakuwa tayari kujifungua kwa ajili ya kazi ya Roho Mtakatifu. And she got angry with me. Na sasa akakasirika na mimi. And I tried to tell her this is good for me. Nikajaribu kumweleza kwamba hili ni nzuri kwangu because I took care of all my sins. Manake nilichukua dhambi zangu zote and I have strength from the Lord. Na sasa niko na nguvu kutoka kwa Mungu but she was still angry. Lakini alikuwa bado amekasirika. After I hang up the phone, baada ya kukata simu and I prayed na nikaomba and I found that I lost the joy. Na sasa nikajihisi kwamba nimepoteza furaha. My heart was very heavy. Moyo wangu ulikuwa mzito. I did not have the joy of the Lord. Sikuwa na ile furaha ya Bwana. And then the Holy Spirit speak to, spoke to me. Na sasa Roho Mtakatifu akanienea. Then I need to call her up to fix, try to fix the problem. Try to take care of the problem. Mhm. Mm Roho wa Bwana akanenea nikakuwa katika ile hali ya kuwa tayari kukumbana na ile tatizo. But I did not do anything wrong when I told her about my experience. Lakini si kufanya jambo lolote mbaya nilipomwambia kuhusu jinsi nilivyokuwa nimehisi. So I did not say it was wrong for me to tell you. Na sasa si kusema kwamba haikuwa mzuri mimi kukuwa kumwambia. But I said if I made you unhappy I'm sorry about that. But lakini nilimwambia kwamba kama nimekukasirisha basi samahani nisamehe. But she still could not accept it. Lakini bado huyo binti bado hangekubali. She was still angry. Alikuwa bado amekasirika. After I hang up the phone, baada ya kukata simu, I said I have already taken care of the problem. Nikasema kwamba tayari nimeshughulikia ile tatizo. I have apologized. Sasa nimemwomba msamaha. And she did not accept that. Lakini bado hajakubali. I can let go. Ninaweza mwasilia aende. When I let go, nilipomwasilia aende. And when I pray, I had the joy again. Na nilipoomba nikajaza na furaha tena. And the Holy Spirit talked to me. Na Roho Mtakatifu akanilinea. And told me from now on if anyone hurts you. Kakumwambia kwamba kuanzia sasa hivi kama yote atakuchokoza. Don't take it seriously. Usichukulie na uzito. Take care of the problem right away. Wewe shughulika na hilo hilo tatizo wakati huo. So you are not affected by people. Sasa ili kwamba usije ukakuwa ume watu wamekudhuru. When I'm not affected by people, kama hawa hautadhuriwa na watu, then I can keep a strong presence of God on me all the time. Utauweka ule uwepo wa Mungu kwako kila wakati. I can continue to have joy. Naweza nikaendelea na ile furaha and I won't be affected by people na sitakuwa na matatizo na watu and also I will carry a strong presence of God to pray for people na sasa nitakuwa na ule uwepo wa Mungu kamili wa kusaidia watu kimaombi I found this very helpful to me ninapata hili lilikuwa likiwa la msaada kwangu there are many times that people mistreated me kuna wakati mwingi ambapo watu wamenidhulumu But I made up my mind I don't have to be affected by them. Lakini mimi nilikwisha kukata kauli kwamba sitawahi dhulumiwa na watu. I use an illustration. Ninatumia mifano. Now I work as a chaplain for a few years in a hospital. Eh mimi nimekuwa muombezi katika hospitali kwa miaka chache iliyopita. At the same time I was starting a church. Na kila wakati huo pia alikuwa anasimamia kanisa. I work as a chaplain to support myself financially. Sasa katika ile hali ya kufanya uombezi wa katika hospitali ilikuwa ni hali ya kujisaidia kujimudu kimaisha. It was a non-Christian uh, it was just just a, you know a non-Christian hospital. Ilikuwa ni hospitali ambayo sio ya Kikristo and there were a few Christians in there. Lakini kulikuwa na Wakristo wachache pale ndani. And there was one Christian every time every morning when I greeted her. Na kulikuwa na Mkristo mmoja kila wakati kila siku alipokuwa kimsalimia and I call her name na napomuita jina and I said good morning. Na nikamwambia habari asubuhi 
Every time she just did this. Kila wakati alikuwa anafanya hivi. She was working on something. Kama alikuwa anafanya kazi kwa kitu chochote. And then she just look at me quickly. Good morning. Angemwangalia tu kiharaka mwambie habari asubuhi nzuri. And then she look at her work again. Na tena yeye anakuwa tu busy na kazi yake. And I felt unhappy. Na sikuwa nilikuwa nakasirishwa. Because I said we are fellow Christians. Manake mimi nilifikiria kwamba sisi ni wa Kristo. You can, you know, at least, you know, look at me and say good morning. Unajua unaweza tu niangalie na uniambie habari asubuhi. But every morning when I greeted her, she was like that. Lakini kila siku alipokuwa akimsalimia alikuwa anamtendea hayo hayo. And I know that I have to take care of that. Na nilijua kwamba ilibidi nishughulikie jambo hilo. I don't want to be affected by her. Sikutaka kwamba nikuwe ni eh So when I saw her in the distance, when I so I have to take care of that problem. Na he ilifaa ashughulikie ile tatizo. When I saw her in the distance, alipomuona mbali, I know that when I Greeted her, she will respond to me the same way. Alijua kwamba kimsalimia atamtibu vivo hivyo. And I could feel unhappy if I'm not a, if I'm affected by her. Na sasa mimi nitakasirishwa nitaadhiriwa na huyo mbishi. So before I walked up to her, na kabla amsongee, I would pray and then I say I don't have to be affected by her. Alikuwa anaomba akitaka kwamba asiadhiriwe na yeye. It is her problem. Hii ni tatizo. So I walk up to her and I said good morning. I call her name. Nilikuwa ninamsongea karibu na mwambia namuita jina nikimwambia habari asubuhi. And she looked at me the same way. Good morning. Alikuwa anatazama tu kiharaka haraka nzuri. And then I said, well, I have, you know, I have tried my best already. Na alikuwa anasema mimi nimejaribu jinsi niweze niwezeshwa vyo it's not my problem sio sio tatizo langu i don't have to be affected by her sitaki niadhiriwe na yeye and i turn around and i thank god nilikuwa ninageuka na namshukuru mungu god loves me mungu yule mungu anaipenda god cares about me mungu ananijali i don't have to be affected by her sitaki niadhiriwe na yeye and then i pray to god hallelujah praise the lord na nilikuwa naomba kwa mungu nikisema hallelujah bwana sifiwe and then i kept i kept the joy of the lord na nikaweka furaha ya bwana after i saw her baada ya baada ya kumuona it keep going for a few years like that every day iliendelea hiyo kwa miaka michache kila siku i just learned not to be affected by people's behavior. Nilijifunza kwamba siwezi nikaadhibiwa na tabia za watu. Even when what they do is not reasonable, I still refuse to be affected. Hata kama chenye wananifanyia sio kitu mzuri, mimi nilikataa kuadhibiwa nao. Let me ask you one question. Wacheni niwaulize swali moja. When people mistreated you, wakati watu wanapokutenda mabaya, when they say something not, you know, unpleasant to you, anapoongea kitu ambacho ni kinakuchoma sana now you might not have done anything wrong labda uweza kuwa haujatenda lolote baya and a person say i don't like you na mtu anakuambia tu sikutaki or someone says something you know unpleasant go away ama mtu anakuambia jambo ambalo ni mbaya anakuambia nenda whose problem is it shida ni ya nani is it your problem or his problem Shida ni ya wewe mwenye unafukuzwa ama shida ni ya mfukuza mfukuzaji? Ya mfukuzaji. They say that the problem is for the one who is sending you away. Yeah. That's it. That what they say. Yeah. So it's his problem. Shida ni yake. So If this person has problems, kama huyu mtu wako na matatizo, do I have to be affected by him? Je, matatizo yake yataniadhiri? Because there are people in the whole world there are people with problems. Manake katika ulimwengu mzima kuna watu wako na matatizo because they have been hurt by people, manake wameadhiriwa na watu. So it's easy for them to have anger. Sasa ni rahisi kwao kukasirika. And when they talk to people, when they're frustrated, they will put the anger upon you. Wakati ambapo wamechafuliwa, wanachukua ile asira yao wanawawekea wengine. So whose problem is it? Sasa shida ni ya nani? Is it your problem or his problem? Shida ni yako ama shida ni ya yule? Yeah. So do I need to be affected? So itanidhuru? 
The point is how not to be affected. Kipengele si mimi muhaba. How not to be affected by the person. Now, right now, I'm going to read you some Bible verses. And then, with, and then I'll tell you the answer after this. Psalm 118, verse 6. The Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? What can people do to me? It's what it sounds. Psalm 118 verse 6. Right. Okay. What it says is, the Lord is with me. The Lord stays with me. The Lord cares for me. The Lord blesses me. Na Mungu ananibariki. So I not, will not be afraid. Na sasa usikuwe na uoga. What can people do to me? <coughs> kile sina uoga kwa chochote kile watu wanaweza kunitendea. Let me ask you this question. Wasaidi waulize swali hili. Who is more powerful, people or God? Ni nani aliye na uweza, nani aliye na nguvu, ni Mungu ama ni wanadamu? God, God is more powerful. Mungu ni mkuu na nguvu zaidi. Now God want to wants to bless you. Mungu anataka kukubariki. Can people take away the blessings of God? Je, watu wanaweza wakazichukua zile baraka za Mungu? No. But very often we feel unhappy. Lakini wakati mwingine tunasikia kwamba hatuna furaha. We feel angry. Tunasikia, tunahisi tumekasirika. We feel it's unfair. Tunaona kwamba sio vyema. That the person treats me like this. Kwamba mtu huyo ananitenda vipi? Let me ask you this question. Wacha niwaulize swali hili. When you get angry because someone mistreats you, wakati unapokasirika manake kuna mtu amekuchokoza mahali. When you get unhappy, sasa unakaa hauna furaha. Who suffers? Ni nani anayeumia? What did you say? Who suffered? You. You. You who is angry with you. Are so the if we are angry, if someone mistreats me, then I suffer. Kama mimi ni mekasirishwa manake mtu wa mechokoza, mimi ni liyekasirika, ni naadirika. So this Christian, you know, who was not friendly with me, if I'm affected by her, then I suffer. Tatizo ni hili. Kama nitakasirika manake mtu amelichokoza, mimi ninaye kasirika, mimi ndiye napitia hali ngumu. Do you know people around you who makes people feel unhappy? Si unajua kuna watu ambao wako karibu na wewe wanaokasirisha watu. Do you? Je, yeah. unao? Now when children go to school, are there some some other student they come, you know, come and kick you and Beat you and say something unpleasant to you. Do they sometimes do that to you in a school? Je, wanafunzi mukiwa kule shuleni. Je, kuna wale ambao na kujia wana wapiga wana wachokoza wachukama hawa wangu kule shuleni. And then when you go to work, sometimes the co-workers might say something unpleasant to you. Na hata wakati mugi ne una poeta kufanya kazi pe una panya kazi una pata wale ambao na panya kazi na upia kuna wengi ne wana onge amamu mabwa ya kukuusu. Now even Christians sometimes mistreat other people. Na hata wa Kristo wakati mwingine huwa wanadhuru watu wengine wa Kristo wengine. Some people say I don't want to go to church because there are some Christians who mistreated me. Mwingine atasema kwamba mimi sitaki kwenda kanisani manake nikienda kanisani abantu walikuwa wamekuwa na machina wengi tu yanga ho. Do you know some Christians who have bad attitude? Je, unajua kwamba kuna wa Kristo wengine ambao wako na hisia mbaya? So there are people like that all over the world. Sasa kuna watu sambuli hiyo ulimwengu mzima. When the people when the people believe in Jesus doesn't mean their whole life is taken care of. Wakati mtu anasema kwamba amemwamini Kristo haimaanishi kwamba maisha yake yote yamelindwa. Now when people talk they usually give out two message. Wakati watu wanapoongea wanapeana tu ujumbe mbili. One message is what they say. Ujumbe wa kwanza ni ule ambao wanasema. The other message is their emotion. Ule ujumbe mwingine ni ile hisia. So they might say, "Hurry up." Wanasema, "Arakisha." So the message, the verbal message is do it quickly. Inamaanisha kwamba fanya haraka. 
But the emotional messages, I'm unhappy, hurry up. Lakini anamalisha ndani ya kilibi cha mwe kwa yake kwamba, nime kasirishwa, harafanya alaka. Have you noticed people when, when they talk, very often they carry emotions? Je, usha wae wana watu mukiwana tu mtu akiongea, unajua amesimama wapi. Have you noticed that? Usha wae kundua hayo. And then if you are affected by them, you will be unhappy a lot of times. Kama wata kuduru basi, hauta kuwa na furaha kila dakika na amusha mwenyu analala ako jirani yapa kwa mshe. This Bible verse says, what can mere mortals, what can people do to me? Na kuna mistari ya kibibili ya ambaye na zungumzia kusu jiti watu wanaeza kukutenda. If you don't take their words seriously. Kama hauta chukulia maleno yale uzito. When people say, you're crazy. Watu mtu wanapa sema kwamba, ah weo unakicha. How long does the word stay in the air? Je, mambo hayo tu yenye mtu wametamuka kwamba wewe ni muendazimu. Inabaki kwenye ulimwengu huu, kwenye hali hii. How do we say it? Inabaki kwenye hemaya hii dakika ngapi. So how long does what they say stay in the air? When they say, you're crazy. Omundu na hunyeka, vinyeko ni huicho wananga ho. Uh, no, but doesn't stay for it doesn't stay for a long time. Okay, it's actually when they finish talking, it's already gone, right? Wakata na kwa maliza tuko kutusi olimbwa imeisha ifo. Sini ukweli? Yes. So in the air it vibrates. You crazy? Sasa ni katika ili hema ya chungu na kambi yako mawe unakicha. But many people would catch the word. He said, I'm crazy. Ehe, wakati mtu wanako kutusi kwa mawe ni mandasimu, kuna wale watu ambao wanachukulia ya manena na kuyashika kabisa. I'm not crazy. Ehe, mimi si mandasimu. He is crazy. Wewe ya mandasimu. I don't like it. Mimi si pendi hiyo. I'm angry with it. Mimi ni mekasirikuwa, ni mekasirishwa na wewe. Do people always catch these words and say, Si watu wanashikilia haya manena lafu wanapando na asira, wanasema ni kikupata nita kuchinja. Then do they suffer? Like how watu huwa wanaadiriwa, wanapitia halimumu. Let me ask you this. Wacha ni maulize hili. This negative words, where do they come from? Haya maneno maofu, huwa ya natokeleze ya wapi? They come from their sinful nature, right? Inatoka katika ile hali ya kiasiri ya dhami. Because the Bible says, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Manake mananiko inasema kwa mba kila moja metenda dhambi na kukumukiwa na utukufu wa mungu katika wa rumi tatu shirina dhambi. So people will say negative words. Sasa watu watawangea mambo maofu kukusu. But many people when they hear these negative words, wakati watu wanaposikia haya maneno maofu, they have the negative emotions coming up. Sasa ndani yao kunaanza kutoka ile hishia mbaya, hishia ile chafu. Now, just now I said, when people talk, they have, they give out negative emotions. Tumesewa kwa wakati mtu wanapo ongea, huwa anapeana ile hishia mbaya ni mbaya ni mbovu. Now, sometimes people talk and give out positive emotions. Kuna wakati mingine ambapo mtu hakiongea, analeta hile maneno mazuri ambayo haisumbui mtu wakili. Like they say, I'm happy to see you. Parasema, wana hapu mtu wana pukwambia, hey, nimefurahisho sana kukuona. Welcome here. Karibu hapa. So those are positive feelings. Sasa haa, unaanza kuona hisia mzuri. So we we want to accept those positive feelings. Tunataka sasa tuwe watu wa kukubali hayo maneno mazuri. But when people give out negative emotions, wakati watu wanapo peana yile isi ya mbovu, so this person talk and has negative emotions, huyu mtu anaongea akiwa na mawazo mbovu, and then this other person will also get two messages. Na huyu mtu ambaye wana mzungumzi atapokea pia jumbe mbili, one message is that they will hear the word saying, you know, you're crazy. Ya mkwanza ni kwamba atasikia maneno hae leo sima kwamba wewe unakicha. And also this person will receive the emotions. Na pia huyu mtu atapokea ile isia. And then he'll get angry. Na sasa atakasirishwa. And then he might beat up somebody. And he's like a big one too. Or they might get very angry inside. Ama ndani ya moyo wake anakasirishwa mno. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? Je, hiyo ni sawa sawa. But 
Do people do that? Do people are people affected by other people? Na je, kuna watu ambao wanaathiriwa na watu wengine? Are you affected by other people? Je, umeathiriwa na mtu mwingine? People are. Watu wanaathiriwa because people didn't realize what's happening. Manake watu hawaelewi ni nini kinachotendeka. When someone talks negative to negatively to them, wakati watu wengine wanapoaongea kinyume nao, they say this is unfair. Wanasema kwamba hii sio sawa. I have to pay back. Ni lazima nikalipishe. I have to stare at them. Ni lazima nilipishe. I have to say angry words to them. Ni lazima niongee mambo machungu kwao. I might beat them. Na ninaweza nikawagonga gumbi. Does it do them good? Je, hiyo ni kufanya vizuri? No. Now even in the church, na hata katika hekalu, someone says something negative about another person. Mtu ana mtu anaongea mambo kinyume na mwingine. And this other person, what would this other person do? Huyu mtu ambaye wanazungumza kumhusu atafanya nini? He might not want to see this person. Kuna wakati ambapo hangependa kumuona huyu mtu. He might talk to some other people about this person. Anaweza waambia watu watu wengi mambo kumhusu huyu mtu and he might split the church. Na anaweza akaligawa kanisa katikati. Have you seen personal problems split a church? Ushao ushao wewe una matatizo ya kibinafsi kibomoa kanisa? Yes. Is it worth it? Ni mzuri hiyo? So you know that it is not worth it. Unajua kwamba hiyo sio mzuri. But people are affected by people all the time. Lakini watu huwa wanaadhiriwa na watu kila kila wakati. Then you won't have victory. Lakini sasa kama nini? Then you won't have victory. Hivyo hivyo basi hautawahi kuwa mshindi. And also you cannot keep the strong presence of God. Na sasa hauwezi ukaweka ile ile hisia kumhusu Mungu. Also your life will be difficult. Maisha yako yatakuwa magumu. You will suffer. Utaumia. You be utakuwa you know, suppressed. Utakuwa umefinyiliwa kabisa. And then you might develop sickness inside your body. Sickness you might develop sickness. Unaweza kuwa na magonjwa ndani ya mwili wako. When people are happy all the time, kama watu hawana furaha kila dakika, the first thing it will affect is your digestive system. Your digestion. Kitu cha kwanza kuathirika katika maisha ya huyo mtu ni ile ile vile unakulanga unatafuna vitu vya kula zikitelemka kwa tumbo ule msiago wa vyakula ndani ya mwili wako and you will not be able to sleep well na sasa hautaweza kulala vizuri and you live your life in a miserable way na sasa unaishi maisha yako katika nikana kwamba unaishi katika hali ya utumwa there are two ways to live a Christian life kuna njia mbili za kuishi maisha ya kikristayo one way to say oh life is difficult Njia moja ni kusema kwamba hai maisha ni magumu. People are not nice. Watu si wazuri. I get angry. Mimi nakasirika. I'm unhappy. Mimi siwezi kuwa na furaha. But another way is to say, lakini njia nyingine ni kusema, what can people do to me? Chochote kile watu waweza kufanya kwangu, if God is with me, kama Mungu ako na mimi, I will not be afraid. Mimi sitaogopa. What they say will just stay in the air for, you know, split second. Kile ambacho wanakizungumza kitaishi tu hapa kidogo tu. When he says I'm crazy, wanaposema kwamba mimi ni mwendazimu, do I suddenly become crazy? Jo sasa wanaposema hivyo naanza kuwa na uendazimu. Will you become crazy? Utaenda utaanza kuwa mwendazimu sababu mtu amekutusha kwamba wewe ni mlalu. If the person says you are useless, mtu akisema kwamba wewe hata haufai. Will you become useless? Sasa unakaa tu kweli haufai. No, right? <laughs> so we don't have to take those words seriously. Hatufai kuchukulia haya maneno na uzito. Another Bible verse that talk about that is Romans 8:31. Kitabu kingine ni Warumi 8:31. If God is for me, kwamba kama Mungu ako upande wangu, who can be against me? Ni nani aweze kuwa kinyume changu? 
If God is for me, who can fight against me? Kama Mungu ako upande wangu, ni nani yule awezaye nipiga vita? Who can take away God's blessing? Ni nani awezaye nyanganya baraka za Mungu? Because God will protect us. Manake Mungu anatulinda. God will bless us if we follow him. Mungu atubariki kama tutamfuata. No one can take away the blessings of God. Hakuna yule awezaye kunyanganya baraka za Mungu. If you follow God, kama ukimfuata Mungu, In Genesis chapter 50 verse 20. Katika kitabu cha mwanzo mlango wa 50 mstari wa 20. It was Joseph who was sold by his brothers. Alikuwa Yusufu aliyeuzwa na kakazi. And the brothers at first they want to kill Joseph. Hawa kaka wa Yusufu walitaka kumuua. But later they sold him to Egypt. Lakini mwishowe wakamuuza kule Misri. Now would that take away the blessings of God? You know, Joseph is one person who was who really suffered because of the people around him. But he went to Egypt and the presence of God was with him. That means he kept praying to God. That he has a close relationship with God. And he was not affected by his brothers. And then everywhere Joseph went, he, the people were happy with him. Kila mahali popote Yusufu alipata kwenda kila mmoja alikuwa na furaha na yeye. And later he became the prime minister of Egypt. Na sasa akakuwa waziri mkuu wa Misri. And God used him mightily to bless it, uh, Israelites. Na Mungu alimtumia vikubwa mno kukomboa wa Israeli. So in Genesis chapter 50 verse 20 katika mwanzo wa 50 mstari wa 20 Joseph said to his brothers Yusufu anawaokoa ndugu zake you intended to harm me waliokuwa wanamaanisha kumwadhiri but God intended it for good lakini Mungu naye alikuwa na mpango mzuri to accomplish what is now being done the saving of many lives ili kufikisha mwisho kile ambacho alikuwa amekipanga katika maisha yake his brothers want to hurt him hawa mandugu zake walitaka kumdhuru could they hurt him je walimdhuru no no and he went to egypt and he followed god na alipoenda kule misri na akamfuata mungu and god raised up his life to be higher and higher and higher na mungu akainua maisha yake ikakuwa ya kuendelea juu na juu zaidi So we want to learn from Joseph. Tunataka tujifunze kutoka kwa Yusufu. If people say something negative to you, kama mtu ataongea jambo kinyume na wewe, if you are affected by them, kama utaadhibiwa na hao watu, you will have joy and freedom. Wewe hautawahi kuwa na furaha na uhuru. But if you say what they say comes from the sinful nature. Lakini kama utasema kwamba lolote ambalo unazungumzia linatoka kwenye hali yao ya kiasili ya dhambi, and it came from Satan. Ya kwamba ilitoka kwa shetani. I don't have to be affected. Mimi sitawahi yadhiniwa. I can just let go. Ninaweza achilia tu waende. And believe that my life is precious. Na niamini kwamba maisha yangu ni ya dhamana. I don't have to be affected by people. Sitaki kuadhiriwa na watu wengine. This teaching is very simple. Mafunzo haya ni rahisi. Don't take garbage. Ya kwamba usiokote uchafu. Now if this is garbage. Kama huu ni uchafu. Do you eat garbage? Unakula uchafu, unakula uchafu. Do you eat garbage? Unakula uchafu? Tunakula no. uchafu. Garbage you don't take, right? Eh, hey, uchafu hatukuli. I use an illustration. If someone has some dung, feces in a in a pot and pour at you. Kama mtu anaweza chukua kinyesi, okay. Kama mnanya na kuku la mafui mana arimi karatasi mana hapo ndasere what would you do ona hola shi do you say i want it i want it kutesema baba ni nimejishimbia nimejishimbia you would go away right si utaenda if it get onto your clothing na kama ilikuwa imejipaka kwa mambo zako what would you do utafanya nini You go home and change your clothes. Unaenda nyumbani unabadilisha nguo zako. And wash yourself, right? Na unajiosha, si ndio? 
Will you go home and say and smell it? Wow, this smell bad. Say, Ojaina, you man, I will be home. Ojacho, we will yaho. I fool you, we will be. No, we are the other thing to bed. And then you say, That person is terrible. But I said, Oh, we are not big, Abisa. And you keep it on your clothes every day and smell it every day. That person is terrible. Now you don't want to go home and do a care in a sick who has a toy, because the other one is a man that is a look of a buyer. We don't want to buy the house toy. Do it. Do you do it day after day? No. They will not find you a killer sick who bad and you give it. You will wash it right away, right? Who does he own a city? But let me tell you, like you want to be one beer. When people, other people mistreat people, these people will keep remembering it. It's terrible. Kama mtu atakuduru, wewe ambayo ulia adiriwa, utakuwa na mawazi ya kukumbuka kwa mba mtu fulani alitendea hili. Now with thumb, people don't want to keep it on the body. With thumb, feces, people don't want to keep it on their body. Lakini mtu wa kutupia mafi, kinyesi kimekipawa kwa mangu wa zako, hawezi ukabakinaza utazitowa. Sini ukweli? But with negative words, many people keep it on their body forever. Lakini katika kizazi hiki, watu wanabaki na hayo manuko miaka nenda rubikila siku tuwa na jinusa. And say, that's terrible, terrible, terrible. Iyo ni atari, iyo ni atari. Their wives, their wives will say, my husband restricted me so many years. Kuna wanawake ambao wanasema kwamba, wana yangu amenidanganya miaka nyingi. Now, some women get together and they talk among themselves. Wa mama wakati mungini uwa wanajiweka pamoja na wanza kuna anza kujizungumzia. And then they say, oh, how terrible my husband is. Anazungumza jinti mume wake ni mbaya kabisa. My husband doesn't treat me nicely. Ah, uyu wanangu hata hani bebelezi vizuri. Now, does this happen in this country? Je, hiyo inafanyika kwenye dunia hii? And then they just keep remembering the husband. Na sisa wanaende letu kukumbuka yule mume wawo. She will remember bad things. Che, ni viema tu na kumbuka mambo maofu. The Bible says, forget about the past and move forward toward the goal that God has set for you. Maandiko na sema kwamba, tusahau ya liyo pita, tuendele mbele ili tukafikie yale malengo ambayo mungu alitupangia. But many people keep remembering bad things. Lakini watu wengi wanatelea kukumbuka zile vitu vipaya zenye watu wengine wali watelea. And they keep being unhappy. Na sasa wanaendelea kutoishi kwa furaha. Now the key to this is don't eat garbage. Ufungua kwa haya ni hili, wacha kukula, taka taka. Don't eat bad words. Usikule maneno maofu. Why is it so hard for people to do it? Kwa nini hili ni lahatari watu kufanya hivu? Because in the heart they say this is unfair. Manake na niyamoyo mtu atasema kwa mba hii si vizuri. I don't like this person. Mimi si mpendi mtu huyu. I have to repay him. Ni lazima ni kalipishe kizazi. Does it do him good? Je, hiyo ni namfanya mtu kuwa mzuri? No. But let me ask you. Lakini wata ni kulize. Do you still remember some people that mistreat you? Je, bado unakumbuka watu ambao wale kuduru and you just don't like them. Na hauwapendi. Let me ask you, does this happen to you? Je, hiyo nafanyika hapa kwetu? There are some people, you just don't like them. Kuna watu tu yani hauwapendi, no mwono lapa kufuza mare. You keep it in your memory. Yani wavika mmaparo ko. For years. Humiaka chiyakure minji. And you feel unhappy about it. Nilano mulola asho sanga langata. Does it happen to you? Je, if you hold on, who will you win? Is this wise? Je, who ni werev? Is it wise? No. But why do people do it? Na kwa nini watu wanafanya hivu? People just say, he's so bad. Mutu nasema kwa mba, uyo si mzuri. I don't like him. Si mpendi. And we keep being angry. Na sasa tunajueka tumekasirika. Let me ask you. Are there crazy people in this country? I don't know. Yeah. And, and they might not know you, and then they come up to you and. Yeah. 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 Ye
Have you seen a crazy person? Yes. Now, when the crazy person talks to you and then he walks away, do you keep remembering about the crazy person? No. Because you say that person is crazy. I don't want to remember him. So you forget about him very quickly. Right? So you know how to do it. You just don't take his words seriously. You understand he has some problem. The problem is the people around us, we just cannot let go. We cannot let go of the people around us who mistreat us. Because we say he's a normal person. And he is my husband or wife. So when he does something unpleasant to me, I cannot accept it. And then who suffer? We suffer. And then our life will not go up to the high level God has planned for you. Let me tell you that experience in 1998. When I learned not to be affected by that person. From then on, I learned not to be affected by negative people. I say this is his problem. Now, if I'm wrong, I will apologize. I will keep being nice to the person. Because the Bible says, repay wickedness with goodness. You know, I want to follow God, so I want to be nice to every single person. Let me tell you, I used to serve in a traditional church. I was also a professor in a seminary of the traditional church. But I was rejected because I experienced the Holy Spirit. And at that time, there was one person who really wanted to get rid of me. She tried every way to get rid of me. And finally, I had to leave. When I thought about that person, and a number of times I would say, she has to face the judgment of God. But God spoke to me. Do not remember what she has done. Do not be affected by her. Do not think about her being judged by God. Instead, have compassion on her. Because she was driven by her negative thinking. And so instead of that, I pray for her. And ask for God's blessing upon her. And I said to God, I pray that one day when she goes to heaven, that God will say you are faithful in your way. In her traditional church method, in that way, that she will be faithful. And I could get let go of her. 
I even wanted to see her again. Nilitamani kumuona mara tena. And then say something pleasant to her and na, bless her. Na nimwambie kitu kizuri kumhusu nimbariki. But at this point I don't even remember how she looks now. Lakini sasa hizi hata sikumbuki anaonekana namna gani. It doesn't matter. Haijalishi. The main thing is in my heart I don't want to keep the anger. La mmoja ni kwamba ndani ya moyo wangu sitaki kuweka hasira or to keep the hurt feeling. Ama niweke ile hisia ya hasira. Now there is one another secret I want to share with you. Kuna siri nyingine ambayo ningelipenda tena kushiriki na nyinyi. To have you know how to forgive sinners. Jinsi ya kusamehe watenda dhambi wenye dhambi. And the key is have compassion on sinners. Na ufungua ni kwamba ukuwe na upendo na watenda dhambi. Some people they hurt people easily. Watu wengine wanadhuru watu kiurahisi because they have been hurt by people many times. Manake pia hao wameadhiriwa na watu wengine mara nyingi. They have not experienced much love. Hawajawahi hisi ule upendo mkubwa. They are not living in the love of God. Hawaishi katika upendo wa Mungu. So they get angry with people easily. Sasa wanakasirishwa na watu kiupesi. Some people, you know, if anyone touch him, they'll say, "Very ah, angry." Kuna watu kuna watu wengine kama mtu atamguza tu, ataanza kupiga kelele manake tayari yuakishi ameshakwisha ameshakasirishwa. Because this person has been living in pain all his lifetime. Manake huyu mtu ameishi sana katika umachungu kila dakika. So we want to have compassion on them. Tunataka uwe na upendo nao. This person is suffering. Huyu mtu anaadhirika. He has been hurt by many people. Oh, amedhuri ameadhiriwa na watu wengi. So I want to bless the person. Nataka nimbariki huyu mtu. And then forgive the person. Alafu ni msamehe huyu mtu. So I'm not affected by the person. Ili kwamba sasa siwezi nikaadhirika na huyu mtu. Some people keep hurting hurting people from time to time. Kuna watu ambao wanachokoza watu kila wakati kila wakati kila dakika. Is it worth it to be affected by them? Je, ni vyema kuadhiriwa kuadhirika sababu ya watu wengine? No, it's not worth it. Sio hiyo sio vyema. Let me tell you. Wacha nikwambie. Since my experience of the Holy Spirit, wakati nilipohisi Roho Mtakatifu, God has given me, you know, that God has taught me to take care of my problems. Mungu amenifunza jinsi ya kushughulika na mashida zangu. That I learned not to be affected by people. Mimi nilijifunza kwamba siwezi nikaadhirika na watu wengine. And every day I rejoice in the Lord. Na kila siku ninafurahi katika Bwana. And so God gave me this teaching called joyful victory. Na sasa Mungu akanipa hili fundu linalosema kwamba ehe ushindi wa furaha. Whether it's people or difficult situation. Kama ni watu ama ni hali ngumu. I have made up my mind to be joyful in the Lord. Nilishakata shauku kwamba nitaishi maisha ya furaha. I have made up my mind not to be affected by people. Kwamba nilishakata shauku kwamba sitawahi adhirika na watu. And stay being peaceful and joyful. Nitaendelea kuishi katika hali ya amani na hali ya furaha. And I found that those people could never take away the blessings of God. Na nilikundua kwamba hawa watu hawezi wakaninyanganya zile baraka Mungu amenipangia. I want to share with you one experience. Nataka nishiriki na nyinyi. There was one man that kulikuwa na mtu mmoja. He doesn't accept the work of the Holy Spirit. Yeye hakubaliani na kazi ya Roho Mtakatifu. At one time he took a pastor. The pastor is a friend of both of us. Siku nyingine alikuwa anazungumza na mchungaji na huyo mchungaji alikuwa ni rafiki wao wote. He told the pastor to come to see me that he will come together. Alimwambia pastor kwenda kumtembelea waende pamoja. And he kept saying things that he doesn't accept, you know, my experience and and say negative things. Alikuwa anazungumza mambo kinyume na yeye, mambo ambayo sio mazuri. When I listen, I discern that he doesn't accept the work of the Holy Spirit. Niliposikiliza nikagundua kwamba huyu jamaa hakubaliani na kazi ya Roho Mtakatifu. And I said in my heart I don't have to be affected by him. Na nikajinenea katika moyo wangu kwamba sitaki kuadhiriwa na mambo haya. So he kept saying talking negatively. Aliendelea kuzungumza kinyume. I just listened to him quietly. I didn't say anything. Nilikuwa nasikia tu akizungumza kama nimenyamala sikuongea chochote. Until at the end I said something to bless him. Mpaka nilipotengeneza kitu cha kumbariki and then he went away. Na akaenda sasa. 
And the pastor said to me, "Na mchungaji akaniambia, Pastor Yip, mchungaji Yip, you're really peaceful. Hey, je, uko tu na amani. You're not affected by him at all. Yaani hata haujaadhirika na yeye kabisa. While he was talking, you were just quiet. Alipokuwa akinena ulikuwa umenyamaza tu. You did not have any anger. Hata haukukasirika. I said it is his problem that he doesn't accept the work of the Holy Spirit. Akasema kwamba hilo ni tatizo lake kama hakubaliani na kazi ya Roho Mtakatifu. I don't have to be affected. Mimi sitaki niadhirike. You know, I have experiences like this all the time. Unajua nimekuwa na hisia kama hizi kila wakati. And I have victory one after another. Na nimekuwa na ushindi baada ya ushindi mwingine. The motivation for me is kile ambacho kinachochochea ni hiki. God loves me so much. Mungu ananipenda zaidi. My life is precious. Maisha yangu ni ya muhimu. I can do great things for God. Naweza fanya mambo makubwa kwa ajili ya Mungu. Different countries and bless people. Naweza enda katika katika nchi tofauti nikibariki watu. And I can train people not to be affected by people. Why should I be affected by people and take away the ministry? So I choose to say I will not be affected by anyone. And at the same time I bless them and forgive them. Na wakati mwingi ninawabariki na kuwasamehe. Let me ask you is your life precious? Wacha nikuulize je, haya maisha unayoishi ni mazuri? Does God has a wonderful plan in your life? Je, Mungu hapo na mipango mizuri ndani ya maisha yako? Yes. Do you want to live up to the plan of God? Je, unataka kuishi mpaka ufike katika ule mpango wa Mungu? Or do you want to live your whole life? Oh, I'm a sad woman. Oh, I'm unhappy. Ama unataka kuishi maisha ya kusema kwamba ah, sio ndio somo khasi katika umango huu, umango sinanga furaha. Or do you want to say it doesn't matter what they do to me? Ama unataka unataka kuishi maisha ya kusema kwamba hata wanisengenye hainijalishi hainihusu sikio wala ndewe I can be joyful all the time naweza kuwa na furaha kila wakati and the key is very simple don't eat garbage na ufunguo ni rahisi kwamba usikule takataka clear your memory of all garbage hebu kasafishe mawazo yako ambayo iko na uchafu If people say negative things to you, forget about it. Kama watu watazungumza mambo maovu kuhusu wewe sahau hayo. Forget about this negative words and 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 bless and forgive these people. Wewe sahau kuhusu haya mambo kinyume na wewe bariki na kuwasamehe hao watu. Is this teaching very complicated? Je, mafunzo haya ni magumu? Just Remember say this with me. Say this with the pastor. Don't eat garbage. Nataka urudie hili jambo. Usikule takataka. Don't be affected by sinners. Wewe usiadhiriwe na watenda dhambi. Have compassion on sinners. Kuwa na upendo na watenda dhambi. Mimi hamsemi. Pray for the sinners. Waombe watenda dhambi. Forgive the sinners. Wasamehe watendadami. Now this is a very simple teaching. Hili ni funzo rahisi, but it will help you to have joy every day. Ambalo tukusaidia uwe na furaha kila siku. You can enjoy life every day. Waweza kusherekea maisha kila siku. Is that beautiful? Je, hiyo inavutia? Is there someone that has hurt you? Je, mtu ashawahi kukuadhibi? Can you have compassion on the person? Unaweza kuwa na upendo na mtu ambaye anakuchokoza and pray for the person na ukamuombe and let go of the hurts. Na sasa uwatane na moyo wake kabisa. Let me tell you, God has spoken to me many times. Wacha nikwambie Mungu amenenenea mara nyingi. Sometimes when I'm washing dishes, wakati wa ninapowasha zile sahani, I thought of some people that has hurt me. Nina wana watu wakilichokoza and then i will say i will have compassion on the person lakini mimi nasema kwamba nitakuwa na upendo na huyo mtu and pray for the person na niombe huyo mtu i don't have to be affected by the person mimi sitaki kuadhiriwa na huyo mtu i 
you know, I can be joyful in the Lord. Niza kuwa na furaha katika Bwana. And God is a wonderful plan in my life. Na Mungu wako na mpango mzuri katika maisha yangu. Let me ask you. Wasali kuulize. When you are quiet, sometimes you remember some people that has hurt you. Wakati ambapo umekaa mahali umetulia je, huwa unakumbuka yule mtu ambaye alikudhuru? Has it happened to you? Ishawahi tendeka kwako? But many people when they think about these people, lakini wakati mwingi watu wengi wanapofikiria kuhusu hawa watu, and they will say these people are terrible. Wanasema kwamba hawa watu ni watu waovu kabisa. And they keep smelling think about the bad things these people have done. Wanaanza kukumbuka yale maovu ambayo watu walikuwa na uome wamewatendea. Is that good or not? Je, hiyo ni nzuri ama ni mbaya? So you want to forget about what they have done. Kwa hivyo inafaa usahau yale yote ambayo wametenda. And have compassion on them. Na uwe na upendo nao. And bless them. Na uwabariki. And say I'm loved by God. Na useme kwamba nimependwa na Mungu. My life is precious. Maisha yangu ni ya muhimu. How many of you can think of someone that has hurt you before? Can you raise your hand? Can you raise your hand if you are Remember someone who, who has hurt you before. Hebu kama waweza kutuka mtu ambaye alikutenda mabaya, hebu kainue mkono wako. Can you raise your hand if you can remember someone that has hurt you before? That has made you unhappy. Hebu kama kuna unaweza kumbuka mtu ambaye alikutenda mabaya siku nyingine, hebu inua mkono tuone. Kama unaweza kumbuka mtu alikuchokoza. Okay, if you can think of someone that has hurt you or make you unhappy, raise your hand. Kama kuna mtu alikuka silisha siku nyingine, unaweza mkumbuka, hebu kainue mkono juu. If someone is affecting you, kama mtu anaendelea kukudhuru, maybe someone in your family, na kuna mtu katika familia. Maybe someone you see now, na kuna mtu ambaye unamwona hata sasa hivi. No, at this point, I will invite you to come to the Lord. Wakati huu nitawaiteni mkuje katika Bwana. And think about this person na ufikiria kuhusu huyu mtu and say this person has suffered. Na useme kwamba huyu mtu ameumia. And you want to bless them and pray for them. Na nataka niwaumbariki na niwaombee. 